Hello, colleagues, and welcome. Uh, I present myself. I am Carmen Peña. I am the immediate past president of FIP, first female president of this wonderful, amazing organization, and one of the selection panel members of the FIP Wise Racing Stars. It's my pleasure to host this video chat with two of our brilliant FIP Wise Racing Stars. Ayodeji Matuluko from the UK and Onrun Erguben from Turkey. One of the greatest initiatives that we have FIB is FIBWISE, uh, which champions and enables women in pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacy education to achieve their fullest potential and attract female students and young professionals into these fields. This year, FIBWISE launched its inaugural FIBWISE Racing Stars list, which recognizes exceptional women in pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacy education selected by a FIP or FIBWISE panel of which, as I, uh, uh, I already said, I am part of this group. And based on their achievements, innovations, and significant impacts made, it is just a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to recognize brilliant racing stars in our profession. Let's get to know Onrun and Ayodeji, these two wonderful FIP-wise racing stars. I would like uh, our racing stars to introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. For that reason, please, if you don't mind, Ayodeji, would you go first and tell us um, who are you? <laughs> Thank you so much, Carmen. Thank you. It's so it's such an honor to be interviewed by one of the past presidents of FIP. So um, hello everyone. My name is Ayodeji Matsuluko. I was born in Nigeria, born and bred in Nigeria, where I had my bachelor's degree in pharmacy at the University of Lagos. So after that, I had my internship training in hospital, and after one year of experience, I went on to the University College London for my master's in clinical pharmacy, international practice and policy. So after that, I worked for two years in hospital, and then I came back to the UK again, and currently I am about to complete my PhD. So my PhD is being undertaken at Glasgow Caledonian University in Scotland. And my current research work focuses on improving antibiotic use and antibiotic prescriptions in Scottish acute care hospitals. Thank you. Thank you, Ayodeji. Uh, and now, please, Anrun, tell us, introduce yes. yourself. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Ayo. I'm so happy uh, to be here. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Umrum. Uh, I graduated from pharmacy faculty in 2021. I'm a PhD student at Istanbul University right now. Uh, my PhD field is pharmaceutical technology, and I'm interested in combining uh, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical science and disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence, like virtual reality, like this. And I'm co-founder of Parmaino. Thank you so much. Great, great. You, uh, our, the people who are listening to us, I think that with these previous uh, curriculums of you, they are understanding why you are raising stars. Uh, thank you. And now I would like to chat with you by asking a few questions, which we ask all the FIP or FIP Wise Racing Stars in this video chat series. Let's start with Onrun, please, mm -hmm. and continue with Ayodeji for each question. I give you the floor, don't worry at all about uh, the movement of the, of the chat. Mm, Onrun, yes. what does it mean for you to be recognized as one of the 2022 FIP Wise Racing Stars? Uh, it's pretty hard for me to tell you this, actually. I have incredible feelings. I'm just at the beginning of my career. It's an honor to be on this list uh, because every woman on this list is incredible, like uh, Ayo. Uh, in fact, uh, we don't only represent ourselves here. We also represent people all over the world 
who love their profession, work hard, and dedicate their lives um, to education and science, actually. That's why I'm so honored, so happy, and so proud. Rising stars is more important than we think because it shows that you can be successful no matter what uh, country you are in actually this is important because it shows us that we should all follow our dreams uh, as a rising stars my next biggest goal is to set an example for everyone regardless of man or woman uh, with my story thank you thank you and you and you Thank you. Um, when I got the news, um, I had a mix of emotions, but most importantly, being recognized as one of the FRP Wise Rising Stars is a great feeling, and it is a validation of all my hard work and efforts over the past few years. And it's actually a great honor to be included on the list with other very well accomplished women like Omron from all over the world. And it's quite amazing. And I'm encouraged to aspire towards achieving all my goals within the pharmaceutical field and continue to um, support developments and encourage other women who are starting out early in their career to achieve more. Thank you, Ayu. Uh, and now, Onrum, what would change if we achieved gender equity in your field? And what would it lead to? Uh, actually, I think uh, my proudest moment was getting prized and ever known as the Oscar of Pharmacy in Turkey. Uh, I was the youngest pharmacist ever to get prized this ever. Uh, but now, uh, my proudest moment is undoubtedly being a rising star. It's a great feeling to see your achievement appreciated by an important institution like FIP and see your uh, effort pay off. Uh, we received this news uh, with my mother and my father. I can't forget the light in their eyes, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, FIP, for these feelings again. Um, and the most difficult part was trying to manage my own company while doing my doctorate and on the other hand working in a pharmaceutical company uh, it's still like this because you need to uh, you need to do your time management really very well uh, another challenge of course was explaining technology and artificial intelligence to my colleagues to pharmacists uh, unfortunately i have been criticized many times uh, people sometimes think that success is straight line and yeah, that is uh, it starts and continues same line, but it is not. Uh, success is bumpy road, actually. Even to be uh, successful, you need to fail uh, at some point. Uh, being able to learn from those failures has been one of the hardest points in, in my career. Thank you. Thank you, Rum. And, and you, Ayodeji, could you let us know what is your proudest and most challenging moments in your career in the past? I'd say um, my proudest and most challenging moments, they are interlinked, they're connected to each other. Um, firstly, my most challenging moment, which I'll start with, has come about as a result of needing to persevere and be persistent in the face of challenges. So uh, approximately four years ago, when I made the decision to pursue pharmacy practice research and decided to start my PhD, I was faced with some um, challenges, personal challenges that threatened my decision to go forward with my well laid out research career plan. And I actually thought I could not continue my PhD a month into the PhD. But with support of my family and a few colleagues who provided a strong support system, I picked myself up and I continued in my PhD journey. And why this links to my proudest moments is because um, even while dealing with all these challenges that life threw at me, I've been able to achieve more in the space of four years, this past four years, than I've achieved at any other time of my life. And what I find that is when we go through challenges, we have two options. We can either give up or we pick ourselves up and we adapt to the new reality. So by the grace of God, I've been able to achieve the latter. And throughout this period, in addition to almost completing my PhD, um, which is one of my proudest achievements so far, I've been more active in the global pharmacy field through my um, volunteering and work with FIP in the past, Commonwealth Pharmacists Association and other activities. And in the process, I've become a better person, I've become a better leader. 
And I led projects such as FIP YPG's um, career development toolkit, which was my proudest achievement while I was serving on the FIP YPG steering committee in 2020. So I've done all this while carrying out my PhD, and it makes me quite proud. And I've also survived the pandemic like everybody else, and going through all those challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, now, um, on again, what would change if we achieve gender equity in your field? What would it lead to? Lead to? Uh, besides pharmacy, I'm also interested in combining pharmaceutical science with artificial intelligence, actually. Unfortunately, pharmacist women working in the artificial intelligence and software industry in my country are less than men. Uh, if gender equality had been achieved, uh, this field would develop faster because I think uh, women are more emotional and multifaceted beings than men. <laughs> Sorry, men. Uh, pharmacy science require emotion, patient communication, and empathy uh, at some point. It's necessary to take advantage, advantage of these feelings while creating the needed technology. And women uh, do this really very well. Uh, if there was uh, gender equality in my field, it would uh, definitely be faster progress. And uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the founder of the Turkish Republic, has saying, everything in the world is the handiwork of women. Uh, that's why we need to mentor women uh, and teach them be leaders. We need to create entrepreneurial uh, women, actually. Uh, we have great, res great responsibility in this regard. On the other hand, according to the study, a woman need to work an average of 10 minutes more each day in order for a man uh, and a woman to complete a task uh, in equal time. Because we also have different responsibilities. If we want gender equality, we must be good role models for young women. Uh, of course, we are getting to better, uh, better points in terms of uh, gender equality. And I hope that one day uh, we will be no different from each other except our uh, physical features. I agree. And you, you, what do you think? What, what would you change if we achieved gender equity in your field? Um, if we achieve gender equity in my field, which is um, broadly um, pharmacy practice research, I think it would be great if we approach this from an angle of how do we get more women involved in research, and leadership, especially in um, low resource settings or less, um, less well developed settings and places like also my own country, Nigeria. Because I remember discussing it some years ago with somebody, and we're talking about how in early career, women appear more active in leadership roles. When they leave school, they're so active, they're serving on committees. But when they advance, it appears that they just become invisible and missing in action. And I remember. Um, this person's response was that um, as women get older, they want to build families, they want to have children, and they don't have time for leadership roles. And I remember thinking to myself, well, maybe it's not women's fault. Maybe we're just assuming that they don't want to be involved. Maybe we should not see them choosing to build families as an advantage, instead of making it look like maybe they've lost out on doing what they want to do as if they want to do. How about we shift the conversation to how do we make our workplaces, our systems more inclusive and adapted to the needs of working mothers instead of just counting them out immediately and assuming they don't want to be involved. Maybe they want to be involved, but not giving them those spaces and the structures. So how about we give them a chance to create opportunities for them to be involved through flexible approaches like um, creating policies that make it easier for women to combine life with work, and also having quotas for leadership. So when we say like a certain amount of leadership roles are kept for women, that encourages, I think that would encourage women to be more involved and would be more intentional by including women at whatever stage they are in life or whatever they decide to do. So I'll say let's count women in and especially initiatives like FIP wise, I think and the Rising Stars initiative is quite important in particular because it's good at providing an intentional space for women to see what they can achieve and create opportunities specific to enable women achieve more fits in science, leadership, just like our male counterparts. Thank you. Thank you, Vajo. Um, next question could say, uh, what do you, uh, on Rooney, you let me, what do your next five to 10 years look like? And what would you like your professional achievements 
to be by then, to future? Uh, actually, job definition are changing all over the world, uh, same as pharmacy. I think that in the next five, 10 years, pharmacy and technology will merge more. Uh, and then the concepts of personalized medicine and personalized care will come to the fore. Uh, my biggest wish in this field to provide decision support mechanism to pharmacists by using technology and artificial intelligence. That's why I'm trying to produce technology that will serve pharmacy and pharmacists in my company. It's very uh, important for the uh, continuity or profession that we can use artificial intelligence every field of pharmacy from drug development to from, uh, pharmacy services, uh, continue countries maybe have different regulation actually, but in the future, uh, all countries will be more influ influenced by each other in the field of education, technology, uh, and science actually. Uh, that's why I teach artificial intelligence in uh, pharmaceutical science at the university in Turkey and tell my students what's going on uh, in the field of pharmacy and technology all over the world. It's very important for me that my students know concepts such as 3D printers, decision support mechanism, telepharmacy, pharmacy 4.0, and guide our profession with these concepts. After uh, five, 10 years, as a person who loves her profession very much, I want to continue producing technology for pharmacy, continue to be a mentor and finish my doctorate, <laughs> actually. Uh, for all of this to happen, uh, we need to work hard and put in a lot of effort, uh, I think. Like as Nobel Prize winner Sanjar said, most people believe in intelligence. I don't. It's labor that separates us from each other. I believe in hard work. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And you, Ayurayi, what is your opinion about what will happen for you? What is that you want your, your professional achievements in, in your next five to ten years? Next five to ten years, um, I like to think I have like three kinds of roadmaps because I'm uh, more like plans A, B, and C because we all know sometimes life does not always completely go as planned. But ideally, in the next five to ten years, or his, within this first year, first of all, I want to complete my PhD and then commence my postdoctoral career as an applied health researcher within pharmacy and within the broader. Um, healthcare field, working with multidisciplinary teams. And my immediate long-term goal is to be able to apply for grants and funding that would enable me to carry out um, research more independently, be able to build research teams. And I hope to continue to actively um, be involved with pharmacy on a global level and develop collaborations with researchers, especially in my own country, Nigeria. And it's still um, plans that I'm making and they're not set in stone and I'm quite flexible and always welcome to um, pick up new opportunities. But basically that's how I envision my nearest future will be, hopefully. Thank you, Adjun. And now two more questions regarding um, most your emotional part inside the professional. If, on room, for example, what is and later, of course, I ask to add you, what is about your current, in, that, in, in the current situation, the things inside your world that you most like and that you don't, you don't like very much, but you have to do it. What is um, uh, the thing and the yin and the yang of your current uh, work situation? Uh, actually, this is a very important question. I want to go step by step. Uh, firstly, where is the world going on in terms of technology and artificial intelligence? What kind of work is done or what is not done? Uh, it is very important to research and learn these questions, uh, I think. Secondly, who is uh, working on this issue? Uh, and who do they work? Uh, it is important for the network to follow and communicate with these people. Uh, parts actually uh, producing uh, technology for my colleagues. Uh, it's very important because uh, actually, especially in Turkey, it is not. Uh, and all the world, um, it's, it's in, uh, on and Turkey's uh, step 
uh, step by step by step. And this is good part, I think. Uh, bad part is explain to uh, intelligent to my uh, colleagues. I, I'm uh, I'm can't uh, explain it actually. Uh, it is it is the uh, bad part I think. But I love my job. I love my career, and uh, I like to impression to uh, for um, oh, uh, youngest. Uh, uh, for you, it's, it's amazing that you are saying because you understand that uh, now I am going to ask the same uh, same things to Ayo. The uh, Ayo is working in the clinical part uh, uh, with mm -hmm. people, hospitals, uh, community, but you are working in a very new yeah. profile of our profession. And the yeah. things that they are new sometimes are very they are very complicated to to be understood uh, that the people follow you invest in you and these kind of things but the, um, this is the part that we have to open to mm -hmm. the, to the new generations of colleagues that they want to follow you your path yeah yeah actually it's very hard but uh, i'm really excited about it uh, because i want an impression for uh, youngest women and youngest people this is a good inspiration <laughs> <laughs> thank you Carmen. Know, what is it, what is in in your current work, not in the past that we, we already spoke about it. The, uh, what is the thing that you more like in, in, your, in, in this part of, of your profession and the, you don't like very much? <laughs> or, or you have to do it, but it's part of the world, but uh, you prefer to, to do other things? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, my current work, because what I'm usually doing now is I'm fully focused on my PhD and completing, but because my work has involved, my research work has involved um, working with multidisciplinary teams within um healthcare setting, that's collaborating with clinicians and then collaborating with researchers. So I, I enjoy that bit of, because I feel like so, like normally research, PhD research can be quite a lonely journey and when you're working on your work, but the kind of work I do, the kind of applied health research work I do, you, you tend to work with different people. And I like that on um, getting different perspectives on research, getting different opinions. It makes the work more robust and especially working with multidisciplinary teams, so not just limiting to pharmacy. So I've engaged with um, ID, infectious disease consultants, um, nurses, public health experts and psychologists. So it enriches my work and I really like that. And I think that's how I, I like, just like my previous response to the last question, I really envision that my long-term career, I'll be working with most disciplinary things because I really enjoy it. But the other part I do enjoy um, currently, <laughs> my research work is, um, um, it's quite demanding. I work long hours, and especially at the last stage of my PhD, trying to finish up. So it's, the, the striking the balance, um, trying to manage time, making sure you don't burn out, and trying to prioritize. And surely when you're um, doing research, you're doing a PhD, there are so many other things you can get involved in. Like for me, um, I've done a lot of volunteering leadership. So it's just prioritizing and making sure that I'm focusing on what is important at that point in time. So it's that feeling of not feeling left out, like feeling left out, but still knowing that you need to prioritize. So it's that decision making and time management that can be tough sometimes, but overall, I enjoy it. <laughs> Good, because I have to tell you that the, the idea of the, the as you said, uh, interdisciplinary team, that this is the, uh, the idea of in 20, 2012, uh, WHO and FIP, uh, FIP worked in a in a statement, FIP statement about the collaborative collaborative practice, yeah. to work in, in teams with other professionals at uh, inside, uh, not only other professionals, uh, also other pharmacies in other uh, paths inside specialties inside uh, our career, and it's it's a big challenge because sometimes it's not so easy to find this real and loyal collaborative practice at outside and at internal level. But uh, thank you, thank you both of you, because they are very good answers. <laughs> it, it was not tricky. It was only to, because uh, I, the only I want is that the people who are listening to us uh, take ideas for, for their work. Yes. Uh, one question that maybe is, again, a bit more emotional than strictly professional. Um, uh, 
for example, what do you suggest for women, young women, maybe teenagers, that they are thinking to have a career in pharmacy? What do you, what would you so suggest these these girls or these uh, young people? Sorry, my voice. Uh, thank you, uh, this question, because this is a very important question, I think. I want to go step by step. Uh, firstly, where is the world going in terms of technology and artificial intelligence? What kind of uh, work is done or what is not done? Uh, it's very important to research and learn this question. Secondly, who is working on this issue and how do they work? Um, is, it is important for the network to follow and communicate with these people. Uh, finally, learning a software language and getting software training is one of the key points, actually, because we are pharmacists, yes, and we love our, our profession. But if we want to move our profession beyond the age, uh, we must understand uh, technology and know what one uh, can do to advise or profession, actually. Thank, Thank you so much. And um, you, are you what, uh, what is what you say to these young girls that they are thinking to study pharmacy and and also as also on uh, told us uh, more in this idea uh, in your field in the uh, clinical pharmacy. What is what did you would you say then? to say, yes, you do it, or be careful, because this is very complicated. What, what is your opinion about it? I would say yes, it means, because as we all know, our pharmacy is very diverse, a very diverse field that you can pick your area in pharmacy, depending on your strengths. And so it's quite interesting. And I would say just go for it, because you have nothing to lose. You learn so many skills, and you'd, you can fit in anywhere. And that's what I love about it. I love that we're all unique in our own way in pharmacy and we're all thriving where we choose. So I'll say just go for it and try to if you can for young girls if you can volunteer early on like volunteer in a pharmacy just see what pharmacists do day to day. Like just try to like shadow a pharmacist in quotes and see um what they do day to day and that way you will be able to know for sure if that is what you want to pursue and also you can get mentorship i think it's important to have uh, mentors people that you can speak to they've been there they've done that they can guide you and say okay this is the way you should go that is the way you can go not necessarily following their exact path but getting advice i think mentorship is key and that way you won't build confidence you are able to plan your career very well because with pharmacy being so diverse, you can also get confused if you don't know strongly what you want and what your strengths are. But if you have someone guiding you, it helps you to um, limit like just going on and about when you're starting out. So I say, um, yes, just get mentorship. And I'll say also um, believe in yourself and believe that you can be anything that you want to be. And never be scared to uh, make mistakes. If you make mistakes, you learn from them. So just believe in yourself. Yeah. More, more than the success, uh, we, we learn more of uh, our faults than our success in the world. Uh, is is life, but uh, believe in in yourself. It's a very a, a very good uh, counsel. Well, ladies, we finish our panel of uh, questions. I I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, this meeting. Uh, at least I have to tell you that it was uh, very very nice, uh, and you learned a lot of things. Not only for young people, also for mature people. That they uh, we are growing until the uh, our, until our less uh, uh, last time in our lives. And for this reason, I I would like to thank you both of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Uh, and I, I promise that I look forward to continuing to watch your career rise because uh, it, it will be to me a privilege to follow you, your, your rise every day with a lot of mm, uh, bad moments, but with a lot of very good moments and you'll be uh, in the top uh, of our profession in a few years. Congratulations 
again. And of course, I would like to, to say uh, to who are listening to us, to this chat, chat uh, that please, we strongly encourage you to apply. And I, have, I ask you that you also uh, say the people who are listening to us that please ap apply to FIP Wise Racing Stars uh, or suggest uh, your colleagues uh, do so next year, year by year, because it's a, it's a fun, fun time of inspiration for new generations. And for the reason uh, is because I think that with all the inspiration that you are telling us, uh, maybe one of the people who are listening to us this year, maybe can be uh, the future racing stars of FIP in FIP wise. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. Please continue with, the, with your great work with the doctor degree, with all the steps that you uh, were telling us in this chat. And I see you, I hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much.